What's up, family? Welcome back to Unauthorized History. How many of you are aware that in the years leading up to the American Revolution, white colonists prepared to fight for their own liberty, yet they refused to consider it the emancipation of their slaves? Nevertheless, when the war finally broke out, enslaved and free black men were eager to join the fight for independence. One of the free African Americans was Agrippa Hull of Stockbridge, Massachusetts. Let's get into it. But if you think the battle's won, think again. The fact is, for each one we reach, there's one we can't. And if we can't reach them, chances are nobody can. Because a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Agrippa Hall was born a free man sometime around 1759 in Northampton, Massachusetts to parents who were freed slaves. It is hard to find a general consensus regarding the facts of Hull's early life. There are some who say that he was born on March 7, 1759, and there are others who say he was born as early as 1757. It is also said that his father died or simply fell on hard economic times, forcing his mother to send him to live with free blacks in Stockbridge. Now, according to local tradition, he was brought to Stockbridge at the age of six by a black man named Joab, a former servant of the Reverend Jonathan Edwards. When Agrippa Hull turned 18, he enlisted in the Continental Army around the time when the simmering conflict turned into the Revolutionary War. He was assigned to General John Patterson's regiment. Notably, he served in General Patterson's regiment for more than six years and was present at many of the most critical battles of the American Revolution. This was, a remar this was remarkable compared to most men around that time who only served for just a month or two and then ended their enlistment. Now, Agrippa Hull served as an orderly to General Patterson, then to General John Burgundy. And All right, now, during the war, Hull was said to have encountered hundreds of black men from the Northern colonies who had been released from slavery to serve in General George Washington's manpower starved army. According to the author G.B. Nash in the American Revolution in Red and Black, the most notable was Rhode Island's 1st Regiment, which in 1778 recruited about 200 slaves and a score of Native Americans whose masters had freed them, with compensation from the state's treasury, mind you, to reform the remnants of a white regiment close to disintegration. These were the men whom the first African-American historians in the mid-19th century heralded as the colored patriots of the American Revolution. Agrippa Hull completed his honorable military service and officially mustered out in 1783. His papers were signed by the future president, General George Washington. After he received his discharge, he returned to Stockbridge, Massachusetts, where he purchased land and married a woman named Jane Darby, who was a former slave. Interestingly, it was Theodore Sedgwick who negotiated with her slave owner and secured her freedom. If you watched my very first video here on this channel, then you know that Theodore Sedgwick represented Elizabeth Freeman, aka Mom Bet, and helped her win her freedom in a freedom suit in the courts of Massachusetts. Now, I took this last part from an article written a few years ago in the Berkshire Edge, and it states, and I quote, For the proud veteran, landowner, husband, and soon-to-be father, life was good but not idyllic. While free to work for wages, wages were neither readily available nor abundant for a black man. While a landowner, it was small holding and the yield was not sufficient enough to provide a crash crop." End quote. Now the real problem was taxes. The debt from the Revolutionary War was choking the country and in order to pay it, heavy taxes were levied by the government. Berkshire sheriffs were seizing small forms for unpaid taxes. Hull had land in the house, but he didn't have that much cash. To supplement his income, he joined up with Mom Beck, aka Elizabeth Freeman, in the Sedgwick household. To further assist with his economic problems, Judge Sedgwick wrote a letter on Hull's behalf in an effort to get his veteran's pension. Sedgwick explained that Hull was entitled to the pension, but was unwilling to prove it because Hull would not surrender his discharge papers, the usual form of proof. Now, because the papers contained George Washington's signature, Hull held on to them until the day he died and it is unclear if he was ever granted the pension that he deserved. In 1844, the historian Francis Parkman visited Hull and recorded in his journal that the old patriarch, 
looked on to himself as a father to all Stockbridge. Agrippa Hall died in 1848 at the age of 89. His portrait hangs in the Stockbridge Public Library. Agrippa Hall was a brave man who accomplishment deserves to be celebrated. I want to give a special shout out to Mara Rodriguez and Chief Chickamauga. Thank you guys for your kind words and your encouragement. It's really been keeping me going. And trust me, I plan on producing more content and I plan to make it as family friendly as possible. Thank you guys. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content. All right? Peace, family. Minister Malcolm, you have that there are all kinds of movements in Harlem growing that you and I don't know about. Oh, yes. Uh, the frustration itself has been, has been sufficient, all that is necessary to get. You know what I'm saying? As an artist, I feel the same type of responsibility. So it's not activism. It's really just life.